Good afternoon and welcome to St Martin in the Field and welcome to this week's Great Sacred Music. As you'll see, we've actually started with the final piece on the programme, Like a Mighty Stream, and we'll be finishing with Wade in the Water, which is the first piece on the programme just to keep you on your toes. World Water Day is United Nations International Observance Day. The intention is to inspire people around the world to learn more about water-related issues and to take action to make a difference. It's observed on the 22nd of March each year, yesterday, to raise awareness about the global water crisis and the need to sustainably manage fresh water resources. And this is why at Great Sacred Music, all of our music is themed around water today. It's our tradition at Great Sacred Music to begin by singing a hymn together, which you'll find on the inside of your sheet, Jesu lover of our, of my, of our soul. A hymn written in 1740 by the 18th century hymn writer Charles Wesley, the younger brother of Methodist founder John Wesley, and was one of the most prolific hymn writers of the time. In fact, he's said to have written over six and a half thousand hymns in his lifetime. I'll let you work out what that is per week. His hymns are marked by their strong doctrinal content, a richness of scriptural and literary allusion, and a variety of metrical uh, stanzas. They're considered to have had a significant influence not only on Methodism, but on Christian worship and theology as a whole. He was, along with his brother, one of the first band of Oxford Methodists, a movement of Oxford students aiming to grow in faith by strictly following the discipline of the university for academic and spiritual rigor. But despite their closeness, Charles and John Wesley didn't always agree on questions relating to their beliefs. In particular, Charles was strongly opposed to the idea of a breach with the Church of England into which they'd been ordained. But on his deathbed, he sent for the rector of St. Marylebone Parish Church, just up the road from here, and purportedly told him, Sir, whatever the world may say of me, I have lived and I die a member of the Church of England. I pray you to bury me in your churchyard. And a memorial stone to him still stands in the gardens of Marylebone uh, Church, just off Marylebone High Street, close to his place of burial. This hymn we're about to sing was originally published under the title of In Temptation, and it's got as its theme the ability of Christ to give comfort, power, and grace. So we remain seated as the voices stand and lead, Jesu lover of my soul. <laughs>
Next, we'll be singing two settings of Psalm 42, like as the heart desireth the water brooks. The first is in Latin, Secret Cervus, which is a setting of the first three lines of the psalm by the 16th century composer Giovanni de Palestrina. Palestrina's life and work centered around Rome. He was born in the nearby town of Palestrina, from which he took his name, and he trained as a choir boy in the Roman church of St. Maria Maggiore, appointed to prominent positions in the Roman musical establishment. In 1555, he sang for a few months in the Sistine Choir until the introduction of a celibacy rule by the new pope led to his dismissal as a married man. Secret Chervis has always been one of the most familiar of Palestrina's motets. It's been frequently reprinted, and it exists in many anthologies of choral music nowadays. It's held us up as a model of Renaissance imitative polyphony. Then after that, a setting of Psalm 42 in English by the composer Judith Weir, who sets the first seven verses of the psalm. It was commissioned for the state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II, at which it was first performed in Westminster Abbey on the 19th of September, 2022. Weir commented about the text and her composition. The words and music speak at first of the soul's great sadness and thirst for God's reassurance. But as the psalm progresses, the mood becomes calmer and more resolved, culminating in consolation with the words, put thy trust in God. Judith Weir said that she was inspired by the Queen's strong faith in Anglican worship and her support for it.
Our next piece is Pure River of Water of Life, written in 2008 by British composer James Whitbourne, with words from the New Testament of the Bible from the book of Revelation, chapter 22. In Christianity, the term water of life is used in the context of living water, and specific references appear in the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation. It states that, and he showed me a river of water of life, bright as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. The Revelation reference is interpreted as the Holy Spirit. The Catechism of the Catholic Church considers it one of the most beautiful symbols of the Holy Spirit. So, Pure River of Water of Life by James Whitbourne. it's time for us to sing our next hymn together, which you'll find on the inside of your sheet, The Lord's My Shepherd. It's a hymn based on Psalm 23, attributed to King David. The tune Crimin was written by the 19th century Scottish composer Jesse Seymour Irvin in 1872. This hymn is a song of gratitude to a loving God in a painful world. 
David expresses confidence and trust in the Lord by portraying God as a good shepherd who both guides and blesses them. God's goodness means that they have nothing to fear. Whatever happens to them in this psalm, God will be with them. So we remain seated as the voices stand and lead, the Lord's my shepherd. Thank you for joining us for Great Sacred Music for today. There's an opportunity at the end to donate to a retiring collection, which helps us to grow and build our music program here at St. Martin's. There's, uh, there's a collection plate for cash or other ways of giving, which you'll find on the back of your sheet. Do also join us for Great Sacred Music next Thursday at one o'clock. Details you'll find on the back of your sheet. The theme next week is the metaphysical poet John Donne. But if you're only visiting London um, and you can't join us each week, you can also find Great Sacred Music online on our stmartins.digital page and our Facebook page. And it goes online 24 hours later, every Friday at one o'clock. And please do also join us each Sunday at 3.15 for Choral Classics, um, our uh, similar program to Great Sacred Music uh, led by members of St. Martin's Voices each week. So we finish today's Great Sacred Music with an arrangement of the African-American spiritual Wade in the Water, which is arranged by Moses Hogan. James Cone, the African-American theologian and prolific author, writes, Spirituals are historical songs which speak about the rupture of black lives. They tell us about a people in the land of bondage and what they did to hold themselves together and to fight back. We are told that the people of Israel could not sing the Lord's song in a strange land. But for African Americans, their very being depended upon a song. Through songs, they built new structures for existence in an alien land. The spirituals enabled African Americans to retain a measure of African identity while living in the midst of American slavery, providing the substance and the rhythm to cope with human servitude. The spiritual, then, is the spirit of the people struggling to be free. It is their religion, their source of strength in a time of trouble. A 
And if one does not know what trouble is, then the spiritual cannot be understood. So as we reflect on World Water Day, let us hope that justice, as we said in the opening piece, does roll like a mighty stream for all those around the world affected by the water and sanitation crisis.